as you can tell by the background, we are on the water. We are at El Mero right now, and we are enjoying happy hour. It was just a matter of days after my return from California that we hit the water. Here's how it happened. I returned to the boat on Wednesday and Lee pretty much had La Brisa ready to go. There were just a few more items to finish when our acquaintance Francisco pointed out that Carnival would be on the upcoming weekend and anchoring out in front of the Malacom would give us great access to all the activities. Lee and I looked at each other and it was then we decided to splash ASAP. After having lived in the yard for more than a year, actually leaving was a time of mixed feelings for me. On one hand, there was the excitement of furthering our dream, the allure of the open road, so to speak. On the other hand, I was leaving behind a beloved neighborhood, friends with whom we had forged deep ties and rituals like going for caramelos in our colonia every Saturday evening. The guys in the yard put us in the water just before quitting time on Friday. We overnighted in the slip at the yard waiting for high water and had a celebratory dinner and bottle of Prosecco with our former neighbors, Nick and Ika. With the Prosecco, we also christened and toasted the boat as she begins a new chapter in her life as La Brisa. Instead of anchoring in front of the Malacón, we opted to spend three nights at the Fonitur Marina. One of our reasons for staying at the marina was ease of access to the festivities and for walking Blondie. We still haven't gotten our dinghy situation in order. That was one of the projects we put off in order to splash a sap. The marina still bears evidence of damage from Hurricane Newton in 2016. Several boats sank as the finger piers tore apart. There is currently a dredging operation to increase the depth. One can see how our passage stirred up the bottom mud. Once La Brisa was secured, it was time to enjoy Carnival. The parade is one of my favorites, and this year's theme was Sueños de Fantasía, our dreams of fantasy, and it was wildly popular. Carnival was an opportunity for us to eat lots of street food and for Ika and me to purchase Mexican hoodies. Each evening, the music went on until the early morning hours, and back at La Brisa, we were serenaded to sleep. On Tuesday, as Carnival wound down, we headed out to El Mero, which is also known as the Almost Free Docks. Ken and Edith, and their two girls, Zoe and Naomi, we're at El Mero with their newly painted and renamed boat, Alondra. This season, they will be heading to the South Pacific. They have some YouTube videos as Biology Family Afloat, and Nick, whose fantastic aerial footage appears in the first part of this video, was going to film their departure on Valentine's Day with his DJI Mavic drone. While Nick was getting footage of the area around El Mero, and even though the controller indicated the drone was seven meters above the sea surface, the drone crashed into the water. 
Ken donned his wetsuit and dove at the GPS location indicated on the console. In spite of several dives, he was unable to retrieve the drone. There was nothing for it but to delay the departure and have a party featuring an amazing goat curry and plenty of gin. Being on the water is wonderful. We still see our old friends and are making new friends. One thing I have found difficult so far is making and publishing videos. With no internet, our cell signal at El Mero, we see how dependent we are on the internet for information and to keep in touch. In the next video, we will go into more details about settling into life on the water and our inverter fiasco. So until then, 